So hello everyone. Welcome to All Stars Online. This is the episode number two. We are so excited to have Nicole, but fell today with us. Uh, we want to thank uh, our sponsors. So uh, this uh, All Stars Online is made possible by the season sponsor that is Alpro, and also by uh, supported by Victoria Arduino, Ernest, and Hario. We thank for the support. We are. Uh, uh, as everybody knows, for a coffee uh, events all stars. We also have um, baristas from all over the world, and they represent uh, diverse uh, communities and voices in in the coffee industry. So uh, we are going to see now a short video with some voices and them experience and their advices for people. So What I would say is spend as much time as you can with other competitors and with judges. You will make lifelong friendships, but also you will learn so much. At a competition, you have some of the best brains in the world at that competition. So you can learn a lot about coffee. I think passion, dedication, connection, consultation, and more importantly, a little bit of patience will bring the best out of you to become a barista champion. So my advice is don't be scared to fail because you have to fail a lot before you make success your dreams. It is not easy to achieve the goal, however, Hard work always will pay off. Keep going. Set goals that aren't just related to your results. Set yourself some goals about what you want to achieve in terms of the skills you want to learn, the story you want to tell. The first years are always really tough in competition and I think if you can set these goals and realise that you are learning things, even if the competition results aren't always there, uh, it becomes a super rewarding and fulfilling experience and will help you become a better coffee professional overall as well. I would say just go out and do it. Um, be brave, uh, just get started and it, it kind of gets addictive and you want to do it again. Um, but yeah, don't let anything stop you and just go for it. My advice to all the, comp the future competitors is that never give up and never put unnecessary pressure on yourself. Don't forget that you're already a winner just by competing because you get out from your comfort zone. Whatever your original reason for being competitors, just uh, believe in it, look forward to it, and remember it. Because you will ask yourself these questions countless times when you are faced with every choice with every trouble. And if this reason is very important to you, it will carry you to the end. It will guide you to find the courage for yourself. My advice for people who want to compete is that you will always be your very own enemy. Understanding your strengths and your weaknesses will really, really help you to overcome this competition and I wish you the best. And now, Nicole, we are going to show a video that was made for, for from you. Do you want to introduce it? Yes, I think I do. Um, the first thing that was incredible for me was how much fun I had making this video. I hope I can um, spread this much this enthusiasm to everyone and what I realized every time people ask me what is coffee in the spirit or what is a cocktail you can do or people are a little bit confused about how to pair coffee and good spirits and this is why I want to show everyone one of the most simple but incredibly delicious cocktails that you can make with coffee and everyone can do it because the recipe is so easy um, and yeah please enjoy Hello, my name is Nicole, 
and I love coffee. Coffee is very important for me every day to get up and to get ready. This is why I take time. I grind my coffee fresh. And I'm very proud of my home setup. I use my filter machine every single day. It is a ritual, a routine, and I really enjoy it. <sighs> and I always can't wait for the first sip. It is magical. And sometimes, in the morning, it even helps me with my digestion. I had to get my machine back and I knew the time had come for me to be a hero. face my nemesis, I needed the Batmobile. Well, maybe it has been a while since I drove it. Um, so I needed another plan, maybe. Luckily, I had an idea.
fine. I'll make you a cocktail. Hello everyone. Today we are making classic espresso martinis. My first ingredients is an oat infused vodka. Therefore, you need one cup of oats on 300 milliliters of vodka. Let it steep for three days and you'll get a very, very creamy vodka. I am using 3CL of this. My next ingredients is Mr. Black Cold Brew Coffee Liqueur. This will give you a lot of texture and a nice sweet note. I'm also again using 3CL of this. My next ingredients is espresso. I'm grinding this on an EK grinder. The very fine setting, 20 grams in on 40 grams out. I'm using 3CL of this. And now all we need is a shaker full of ice. The harder you shake, the more cream you get on your cocktail. After your cocktail is shaken, I'm doing a double strain, so you get the perfect texture. Mmm, nice and creamy. There you go, the classic espresso martini. We'll see about that. Pretty good. Yeah. 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 It's pretty good. 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 It's pretty that specialty coffee deserves. I am Batter Woman. Everybody for sure wants yeah. to try, so just uh, you need to download it. Uh, the recipe, we made the handout on the right, yes? Ooh, nice. So now we are yeah. in the nice part of the episode where we are going to answer all the questions. So we are now to see. Yeah. Do you want to, mm -hmm. to check and to choose the first one? I really like one of the questions um, that says, Hi, Nicole, what has coffee taught you as a life lesson? I really like that question. Um, it's from guest 553. Right? <laughs> um, yeah, what has coffee taught me? Um, I think since I started working in any job that I ever had, um, I realized that coffee was the only thing where I felt equal to everyone else and I felt like I could treat, be truly myself and by being truly myself that opened so many doors for me um obviously it still means that I had to work very very hard for what I wanted to be in this job but um it taught me to to just take opportunities and it also taught me to just do it and just go for it if it was um moving to another city if it was moving to another country for um yeah for learning new things or if it was for example last year um when i traveled to china with the old stars and i'm terrified of traveling and i was so scared and um i'm so glad that i did it because this was again another in, like incredible opportunity that coffee gave me so 
I think that is the biggest life lesson that actually coffee um, taught me to just take my chances and take my opportunities and that we're all equal. Yeah, amazing. And thank you, uh, Guest 553. Sorry that we don't have your name to ask the question. So we are going to uh, next. So I, Amy, Amy ask, um, what are Amy. the differences between the coffee scene in Australia and in Germany? Also a fantastic question. Um, so I think that the Australian coffee scene, how I experience it, is so on the customer experience. Everyone is incredibly friendly, which is quite a lot of change for me being from Berlin, where everyone likes to be a little bit more like, what do you want? Okay, very efficient and very, um, very minimal, I would say. I think quality is still is a high priority for both like both countries. We always really put a focus on the coffee quality. Um, but also what I've experienced here, maybe it's also because of the company I work for in the moment, which is full of crazy people that go home and ferment stuff just because they want to test things. Um, so everyone really takes their work with home and they're all so passionate about it and they love and live for coffee, um, especially in the place where I work at in the moment, which is very, very inspiring. And it's a new approach for me to just light up the fire because I think that's one of the hardest things to do sometimes as a person to always keep and like stay engaged, stay fascinated and stay passionate. Um, so this trip over here was definitely a very good boost for that. Thank you, Nico. So both are amazing places to go. So I guess yes, that definitely. Uh, with Although you definitely have to visit Berlin. Berlin is the European city with so many fantastic coffee shops. It is incredible. You step out of your house and you can't you can't really decide because there's so many. So please, please, please go and visit Berlin. Um, it is the city I love the most, definitely. <laughs> Yeah, I had the opportunity to go last year in for uh, the World Coffee. It was fantastic. I used to say, like, oh, I yeah. should stay like three, four, a, a week longer. <laughs> oh, yeah, amazing. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. So we are going to the next question. Uh, Juan is asking, uh, will you compete in other coffee competi competition too? Well, I have competed in Barista this year already, which a lot of people don't know. So I've traveled in February. Um, February? Yeah, February. It was um, back to Germany. I competed in Barista. Um, I think this was definitely one of my best presentations I've ever done. Um, and I had the honor to um, present alongside Wojtek, who also placed fifth last year in Boston. So the level in Germany has really gone up and it is incredible. And I'm very proud to announce that um, Eileen won this year and she really deserved it. So it was it was just such a nice energy. So Barista was obviously my first choice and the first competition that I've ever done. So I really wanted to do it again. But since I've competed in Coffee and Good Spirits, it's just, it just has me. It's just such a fun competition and it's, mm -hmm. it's so you can be so creative and you can go so many ways. So I'm definitely going to compete in this again. Um, the other competitions that are there is um, Latte Art. I'm just really not good at Latte Art. And Brewers <laughs> Cup is insane because the people competing in it are so fantastic. They're, they're, so, they're like scientists. It's incredible. And... Um, I have coached Ibrick last year for the German competitor and he placed third in the world. So that was kind of like a competition that I've done. Um, cup tasting is another thing Daniel knows. I am just, I just don't get it how people can cup so many coffees and like understand all of the differences. Um, and roasting I haven't done yet. Maybe this is something that I'll do in the future. Have I forgotten something? Um, latte art brewing. Rosta, yeah. Ibrik, Coffee in the Spirit, Roasting. 
Oh God, I hope that's it. <laughs> Good. So, uh, I uh, David. Yes. Yeah, for sure. Yes. David asks what my Good favorite one. cafe in Berlin is. Um, it's Happy Baristas. And I say that with the bottom of my heart. And it's also one of the cafes I never worked at, which is amazing. <laughs> so I can just go there and hang out and enjoy their incredible coffee and their amazing food. Um, it's in my suburb as well, so I can walk there in the morning. And it's just, this is, this is how I'm every, every specialty coffee shop in the world to be. <laughs> they're, they're doing an amazing job. And they do incredible coffee cocktails. Really good. Okay, we must go. <laughs> Okay, so next uh, question. Oh, um, Amy, who is your favorite coffee competitor? Agnieszka. <laughs> um, it's definitely Agnieszka. She's our hero. <laughs> a, yeah, I mean, there's, there's a saying, never meet your idols, but I've met Agnieszka um, last year at um, the competition, obviously, and I had the chance to interview her for my own podcast. So um, I have a podcast which is called um, She's the Barista and it is online on Spotify or on Apple Podcasts or you can go over my website which is my name, NicoleButterfeld.com slash podcast and um, I interviewed her and it was over one and a half hours I think and it was incredible. This woman is inspiring she's humble she's hardworking. she really knows her stuff and it's like and, and and she is just one of my idols and at the same time she's a co-competitor which is quite terrifying when you're on stage but it's also a big 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 honor to yeah to actually be with her on stage so yeah definitely well. Nice and also congratulations for your podcast. It's so inspiring Thanks. for the woman in coffee. That brings me to these questions. Uh, again, uh, Simon is asking: Do you believe that uh, there is a different way in how male and females are treated in the world of coffee? This is actually a very interesting question because the world of coffee isn't just the world that we like to see, it also has different countries involved with different social standards. So Ernex actually gave me the chance to be part of a um, SCA course about sustainability and equality. And I've learned a lot about equality in the coffee sector. Um, and that kind of like opened my eyes, understand that the seven hundred people working on farms um, are women anyway and they get paid so much less so that that's one of the big things when we talk about the world of coffee and people working in the industry um it's not just the baristas on stage it's much much work that we sometimes don't realize and um, that's been done by women so i don't think they get treated equally um but on a lighter note what i always like to promote is the is the fact that we all can compete um so if you're a barista and you don't know if you are, if, if you, yeah, if you can compete, there's no rule in the regulations that says you can't. I've done it, and yes, I've done it. Many, many other women done it. Emmy, for example, who I also had on my podcast, um, or Vendeline. We all just did it, and none of us ever regretted it. Um, so I think competition-wise, there's no difference. And also the last years and the placement of the last years have shown us that we have a lot going for us because nearly all of the world champions are women in the moment, um, except for Coffee and Good Spirits, but we're working on that. <laughs> um, so yeah, opportunities are widespread. Um, if you want to see it in a competition way, just go for it. Otherwise, um, we should be more mindful of what the coffee world actually means. Exactly. That's uh, so uh, wise words. 
Yeah, we all can. Everybody is welcome for everything. So we should be open, everybody open their minds to welcome everyone. Yeah. So uh, because of our, the time we have, uh, we're going to do our last question. And um, mm -hmm. it is, do you want to choose the last, maybe, or? I think I quite like the, do you think that coffee competitions help to lift the quality of coffee world? Yes, why? why do you think so or why do you not think so? Because um, that is a question that I got confronted with in this um, class that was once about Onyx as well. Um, and it was more the question if especially coffee is sustainable, is sustainable and it isn't. But I think that a lot of the innovations that have been shown on stage actually do make a big impact on our day-to-day -day life as a specialty coffee person. Um, so I'm working with um, an OCD, which is a coffee leveler that got first introduced in on, on the world stage. And um, we are now using um, a company that builds a machine that automatically steams your milk and portions it right so you have a better, better calculation of your good and um, this has been first shown on stage to improve the quality of your milk and to be just more precise and um, so we're actually using that on stage now the other thing is the automatic temper just to be more precise in every single way so i do think that i do think that the world stage is a great stage to show what we can do to improve coffee quality in the shop so um for me as a barista that is actually working with all of these things i do think that they got a big stage on the world stage to be promoted yeah and this a place also to bring in some innovations and findings yeah. from baristas so interesting what uh, it was super nice questions from everyone thank you so much for for sending in yeah thank you and, yeah and thank you nicole for answering and for such an inspiring words uh thank you so much really for for the time the all stars program was uh established in 2013 to give opportunity to the world coffee champions to interact with communities to engage to support the specialty coffee communities around the world so uh the next section in the program uh, is going to uh, have a look back uh, to one all-stars event made in puebla city in mexico all female all stars event in the in partnership with the AWCA so this look at that Pueblo is such an awesome experience. I haven't been to many coffee events where it's all women. The women were on the stage doing the MCing, uh, just running the whole competition, and it was so cool to just have women running the show. challenges of All Stars Puebla was I was meeting women from all over the world and we all didn't really speak the same languages very fluently but once we got to tasting the coffee and like tasting espresso and brews it was really cool because we could kind of all relate in that sense it was also cool to see what different flavor profiles and like concentrations and everything the women were going for and get to taste how each different country brews coffee another thing that was super great was the head-to-head -head competitions we got broken up into teams with Amanda and I leading both of the teams and one of the best was when the women had to teach an audience member how to pull a shot of espresso or make coffee in a Chemex. It's fun to see people who are like total novices at making coffee get taught by these women who know so much about coffee brewing and pulling shots of espresso.
The event in Pueblo was one of the coolest coffee events I've ever attended. It was a cool way to have some like female camaraderie from all over the world. Such a good video. So cool to see uh, this organization, IWCA, so good uh, uh, how they empower the women in coffee. What do you think about this, Nicole? Absolutely. I just read a um, comment from Simon, and he says he looks forward to a world in which there truly is equality. Um, and I think that yeah, that events like this do do push it more that way. And I think that in a lot of ways, um, the equality has improved a lot over the last years, but we're still not there. We're still working on it. And um, I love events like this because it gives us space to actually talk about it to and to, yeah, feel empowered enough to talk about it because a lot of the times, yeah, the... The, the topic just gets swallowed up yeah. when it should be more public. Thank you. Oh, uh, nice. So uh, we thank our sponsors uh, because All Stars Online is possible by uh, the season sponsor Alpro, supported by Victoria Arduino, Next, and Hario. So we thank so much for the support and the opportunity to hang out today and to show everybody to your experiences. So we, we had a lot of questions, but uh, we this is not over today. On Thursday, we're going to have a very uh, guilt uh, Instagram Live with um, Nicole. So 9 July in the same hour. Before we go, um, we will leave you with a musical video from 2016 with Latte Art uh, Champion on Paul. That's it's amazing. And for me, it was super a uh, pleasure to host you today. Thank you, uh, Thank you everyone Jessica. for joining. Thank you, Nicole, for, for making it so so good and to make it uh, such a nice video. Thank you so much for all of your questions today. It's been an absolute honor to be on here. Um, yeah. yeah. One, two, one, two, three, four.